From TPN at technophilespodcast.com, I'm David Geisler, and this is the Technophiles Podcast. It's, it's set up as sort of a grid system where if one thing goes down, the whole system doesn't crash. This Saturday, Tony finds a story about Nest's new take on the smart home interface. After the break, V talks about malware that might actually be good. This is the malware Gotham deserves, but not the malware it needs right now. So this is the Technophiles 270th episode. All right, everybody. Welcome to tonight's show. I am joined with two of our regular cast members, Mrs. Miss V. Lobs. (laughs) How's Mr. (laughs) Lobs? He's fine. He's doing your, your fine. Your father, of course. Yeah, right. yeah. Yes, My indeed. father's great. Indeed. Uh, Tony Stiglitz, how are you doing? I'm uh, doing well. Thank, thank you. Well. <laughs> Fantastic. Krista Lee Malone is not available this week. She's right in the middle of, she's like a week away, two weeks away from finishing her dissertation or something like that. Yeah. So she is hunkering down and focused. So tonight it's just the three of us. Yeah. All right. I'm very excited. We don't have school. Woohoo! Saturday night sleepover. <laughs> yeah. Without. We're going to eat Cheetos. Mostly Cheetos, Organic. Cool Ranch Doritos. That <laughs> yeah. was more fifth grade. Cool Ranch Doritos was more fifth grade. I Ooh, feel like absolutely somewhere around yeah. six. Somewhere where when you start kissing girls, you're like n- no more on the Cool Ranch. No, <laughs> yeah, oh, Doritos. No. That's when you learn okay. to not eat those anymore. Uh, Nobody wants that. Yeah, I guess I haven't really touched Cool Ranch Doritos in a long time. I'm I still just, about that nacho cheese. Sorry, in my brain, I just started writing my autobiography called Mostly Cheetos, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's Cool great. Ranch Doritos. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's great. That's all right. Um, so guys, we are talking about some... Well, first of all, your week was okay? Yeah, I mean, we kind of yeah, just chatted. Good. Yeah, it's fine. Chatted. Yeah, it's fine, Dave. Let's go. Yeah, come on, Let's David. do this. Focus. Um, Hustle. Nothing of note. Nothing of so, note. God, I, I can't know. remember. Oh, I played Rock Band uh, 4. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we talked about that on Branching Dialogue, actually, oh, nice. uh, in the last episode. Yeah. Back on Thursday, and I believe that we are going to have a Branching Dialogue guest on our next episode of this show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. Tony Stiglitz. Mr. Tony Rome will be sitting in the Tony spot. <laughs> it is designated the on Tony episode spot. episode 272. Two. We're talking about virtual reality. But tonight, we are talking about uh, Nest. Tony has some Nest updates, which I found quite interesting. And also, V, you found like a kind of a, a weird last minute story about malware yeah. doing good things? Yeah, it's like a vigilante for... Uh, smart homes i kind of like it we have a theme tonight it's you know nest and smart home stuff obviously we're not talking about any home kit apple stuff but we don't need to because what nest is doing is interesting enough Mm -hmm. for sure and then the internet of things stuff so i don't know you want to just jump into it yeah sure let's jump in head first i found an article on gizmodo um adam clark estes wrote it um and it's uh, very optimistically titled Nest's Big Solution for Smart Homes is here and it looks awesome. <laughs> it does feel like this is Google's uh, answer to HomeKit a little bit. Maybe I shouldn't say answer, but like that hub. There, it's a hub. Yeah, right, right. Without so, jumping ahead was, too much. What was the That's problem fair. that this solution is for? Well, Nest was kind of its own thing yes. you know its own smart thermostat yeah. now it's going to function much more like a hub but i'll let tony talk about it yeah. that's all right so yeah we we've talked about nest on the show before um it does, the nest thermostat the smart yes. thermostat specifically yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it does sort of a myriad of things as far as thermostats concerned um there there's also sort of now a nest camera mm-hmm. um and i think there's a nest carbon monoxide detector as of uh, a yeah. year ago or so um, nest protect yeah, um, was protect it? that's yeah. what it was i think I've, I've seen like some some stuff on that where mm. it's a fire smoke detector carbon monoxide oh detector. there we go for now yeah Fair so those, yeah. those are uh or at least were there are three sort of main products that were available mm-hmm. um but now they've introduced a product called the net weave Mm-hmm. Net, I'm sorry. Nesting. I keep saying net. net. Nest. Weave. <laughs> um, and the idea here is mm, that... That weave looks like a nest. Ne- <laughs> uh, I, sorry, it just came to me. various sorts. I, I was, I was <laughs> That's a bad brilliant nest. for just a moment. This is my real hair, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so the but idea is kind of- that this will sort of connect all of your smart devices now you can look at things for the home that maybe google didn't make that uh they have a little sticker that says you know it's compatible with nest works with nest they're literally using nest Nest as their branding for the 
It is literally yeah. Google's home kit. Yep. So, um, like you said, uh, perfect branding. Uh, that's that's sort of what they're moving forward with. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily a surprise that the system is out. I agree. Um, but it's Nest it's, has been selling well. Yeah, it's been very popular. Mm. Yeah. So now they're kind of expanding it into other products, and rather than working um, working sort of everything connected through one. So say if you're it, everything's not connected to your thermostat or um, through your camera or through right. yeah. it's it's set up as sort of a grid system where if one thing goes down, the whole system doesn't crash, and you only really need one Nest oh. product. Oh. So that is so it is not a hub. It is much like HomeKit, but it is not a hub. Like I said earlier, I misunderstood. That's right. So it's yeah. it just becomes like a network. It's almost a language. Like oh oh. Almost. Yes. Sort of? I, the, the, I watched the video and it sounded more like, oh, okay, we've got these all talking to each other and all, also now all together on one thing on your phone. Uh, yeah, yeah. Un- unfortunately, the video is significantly more marketing material than it is <laughs> informational. Yeah. Um, but That's does it have music do. to go? Boom, boom, oh, yeah. Boom, it's all light boom, and pleasant. Boom, and, there are fun and, animations. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. And things are sliding and moving and lighting up, and it's great. When you hook up your nest. Yeah. Oh, oh. There's that boom, version boom, boom, of boom. the uh, infomercial thing where someone gets overwhelmed with the amount of things. Oh, that oh are on yeah. Their Look phone. at my phone. There's so many icons on it. They're bashing their head into the thermostat, I suspect, and they rip it out and go, ay, ay, ay. It was not black and And then their house sets on fire. Still in color, not black and white. Um, yeah, so the idea essentially is to sort of incorporate all of these Nest compatible products into one sort of seamless operate. I don't want to say operating system. It's not an operating system, but to say it's a bit like a language. Yes, yeah. it is correct. Yeah. It's not its own coding language, but it is a. Pardon me. It is a a syntax or a a. Um, you know, an input and an output. Yeah, there's like terms yeah. that they understand together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I forget right. what that actually is called. Let me think about it, but keep going vocabulary? when you do that. Yeah, so like I said, you do have to have um, at least one of these three Nest products. Just one. Um, just one to get this going. It, obviously, if you have, uh, you know, the camera, it can have slightly different functionality. Mm-hmm. Like it can read when there's motion in the house, things like that. Um, but all you need is one to sort of get up and get running. Right. Wow. Um, it, it, I mean, we've talked we've talked before about all the cool things that your smart cameras and things can Homes do. can do, yeah. 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 I mean, I've had entire newscasts of me just rambling on about, like, <laughs> you could have your windows do this and then do that. At 6 o'clock in the night, you can do this. It could be yeah. blah, blah, blah. Your garage can walk your dog for you, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> this, one, this one was pretty uh, heavy on... A, a lock by Yale. Mm-hmm. This is the first sort of Nest compatible product that's right. not Nest branded. Right, right. Uh, that's been put out. It's called a Linus lock. Uh, the idea, you know, it's it's a code, but you can give different people different codes to the house. Oh, which so you gives don't have them... to have keys. You just have yeah. information that you give them. Yeah, and say I have a neighbor that I want to come check my house i can sort of limit their access to uh-huh. either a certain time period oh. or if i want someone to be able to come over during the day i can do that but it also you know will connect through nest to then let you know who's in the house <laughs> and um you know can say like hey johnny just came home something oh, like that's that that's so cool so, so you, you you need like a cat sitter and you just instead of giving them keys you give them a passcode and it's like all right I'll unlock it for these hours for when you need to check on the cat or whatever. And theoretically yeah. you can do stuff or, where like or you can yeah you can see can, when they your best when friend they or whatever your aunt uncle best friends brother sister could enter whenever they want but if they even enter like outside of a window maybe you'll get a special notification so yeah, if they're like, like entering at weird. three in the morning yeah. where it'd be weird. Mm-hmm. Maybe you could get a notification. I mean, all of this yeah. is just logic. It's theoretical. But yeah. I did I did a little bit of clicking around here, and it looks like they're using the thread protocol. Yes. Which yeah, is, and that that is sort of how, from what I understand, well, because it's, it's the, thread it's the and quote unquote Wi-Fi. language that lets them talk to each other. Yeah. And they do it over Wi Fi. They use the thread protocol over Wi Fi. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So that that's, that's the sort handshake. of that Nest. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, Nest. That sort of. Uh, web modularity maybe like if it's a physical item sometimes they talk about things being modular they can you know you can connect a to b but a can also connect to d yeah see i'm going with that yeah 
but from, the, well, but then you'd also have B connecting to D, because the idea yeah, is sure. it's not out of one sort of central. That's true. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, not just the true. nest thing talking to each individual thing. It's those things talking, and then the nest mm-hmm. is like that. The the director kind of well, maybe, well I don't think I don't so. Know. I no? think it's, it's all a little bit a little hive mind. Yeah, it or a a like a lead <laughs> violinist in an orchestra. I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm running out of metaphors here. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. So and, and the partly the I idea know. is. I mean, like maybe fifth flute, but no. I'm just yeah. <laughs> the timpani player. It's how really just the timpani player. Are there? Think of your smart there home as a, a jazz of, band. You'd be surprised how many flutes there are in some orchestras. I believe it. Oh. And then there's always the piccolos in there, and then the uh, oh. oboe is there's always like three in or four different tiers of violin. As a former oh, oboe player, I was I in an orchestra. That. You were an oboe player. Yeah, in middle school. That's kind of cool. Oboe's good. I was percussion. If you know how to play it really well. <laughs> Oboe's good. Rings, when I, when I was in high school. Files podcast. <laughs> I have opinions about orchestra. Did you play an instrument, V? <laughs> I played trombone. Um, I actually. Ooh, we are all over the board here. We've got oboe, trombone, and then I was percussion. Uh, I was oh, also dang. a tenor sax player, if that can Oh, that's kind of cool. A lot of times those reeds, they would go over to oboe as well then. Cover and yeah. whole Like, you know, if you were doing sax, yeah. you'd... We just need like a high brass player and then we're good. I think we're, we're almost set. We've got a really weird we almost ensemble. Have, Crystal Lee, we though. almost have ourselves a nest metaphor. Yes. <laughs> Or a technophile's band. All right, we're almost got to get to break here in a little bit, but uh, let's keep talking about this. Yeah, um, I completely forgot the point. I, I know we did a huge. I know we totally bit there. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I'm sorry. We were t- we were talking about the protocol, thread protocol, oh, Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah. So so in well, I would say in theory, but also in practice, this should also speed up. Um, the uh, uh, how your devices can talk to each other because mm-hmm. it's not all going through one sort of central. Yeah. It's not limited on the processing power of one. I'd thing. say it's more yeah. like a jazz band than an orchestra. <laughs> Though I'm kind of not joking. Anyway, I, I, I get it. A little more yeah. hip, more cool. Well, they have to be listening well, to each flexible, other to know where they are. Flexible, like, are we yeah. going to do another set of four? Uh-huh. Are we going to move on to the next solo? Yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I got. I understood that. I love jazz band. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so it is cool. It looks like it's all working. I mean, yeah. it's all yeah. there's no real That's, uh, there's no real what if here. In, in, it sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Now, the it's Nest really convenient. worked with iOS and Android when it first came out, and I understand it still does. So I'd be curious to see if this Thread protocol is, could also still operate uh, with compatible. some iOS device. It's probably its own thing though altogether. Yeah, I don't. Mm. Um, it didn't say anything in the article, but that could be kind of. Could you theoretically the same way you can clearly run Google Drive on your iPhone? Mm-hmm. Right. Perhaps you could run the thread a Thread Protocol app on your iPhone that still is part of the thing, and maybe that's native in Android. Maybe that's an app in Android. I mean, anymore you'd almost have to. Like, yeah. We've talked several mm-hmm. times about how none of us are well. Most of us aren't like full all one. Apple yeah, we're not tied. Right. I use yeah. the most Apple hardware, but I mean, I live off Google Drive, yeah. and I yeah. don't even yeah. really bother with iCloud that much, except for syncing calendars and mm-hmm. task lists. And yeah. I and I'm mixed hardware, so yeah. like I, I feel like most people would be. You'd almost have to have some sort of uh, the button. The really button I push the most on my iPhone is the Google Drive button. I have yeah. to admit, mm-hmm. you know. I have to and get to whatever it doesn't matter. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. That's cool. Nest. Yeah. Yes. So not not some sort of groundbreaking brand new thing, but uh, certainly an exciting announcement yeah. for yeah, the product. Agree. Making but. making things more. I wonder if we should do Tony. You've got you've got the newscast in a couple of weeks. If there's any like really cool developments here, maybe you could talk about it. Or yeah. Something. yeah. Check it out. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm really curious, like what all the products are that are compatible now. And- yeah, yeah, as of right now, there's only one, but I would expect that. I you're think they're going to see- release a hoverboard that <laughs> yeah. that speaks Thread yeah. protocol. Yeah. They're going to release. Down, it'll send I think the they're going to release, release like a new work. Pepsi bottle that speaks Thread Protocol. <laughs> yeah, and there may or may not be a Jaws 19 trailer that speaks the Thread Protocol. <laughs> yes. I can't resist. We're in the future. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, let's go to break. We're going to come back and talk about malware that might be good, and I am excited to hear about that. Yeah, great, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, David Geisler here, co-host of Branching Dialogue. I am with my co-host, Mr. Tony Rome. Uh, Tony, why don't you tell people a little bit about this show we're doing? So it's called Branching Dialogue. Um, comes out every Thursday, and we like to talk about video games, topics in video games. What are fa- a little bit about our favorite video games? Yeah, there's true. There's a little bit of a reminiscent factor. I kind of yeah. like it. I kind of like it. Sometimes we look back, and uh, people can find it on Facebook and iTunes and YouTube by searching Branching Dialogue. We're also on Twitter at Branch Dialogue. Fantastic. There it is. Tony, I'll see you on Thursday. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> 
Okay, we are back from the break. I am here with V. Lobs and Tony Stiglitch, and we are going to talk about V. I'm very curious about this story. I did not get a chance to look at it. Something about malware infecting the Internet of Things, but having it be a good thing. You got to tell me what's going on here. Yeah. Um. Well, this is malware is the way you would describe it, but it's being called like a vigilante malware. So, so it's, it's, it's a, double negative. Is that what's going on? It's here? a boinware. It's the, bon, bon, bon. <laughs> it's the Punisher. Yeah. It's the it's Punisher. It's the Punisher. It's but it's kind of not it, good. Under the guise of being good, bad, but... Yeah. So uh, Batman is a, a metaphor that is used by a lot of uh, people who have been talking about this. Is Yeah. It's super. Batman is the PG, like DC's PG Punisher. Oh my no! Oh well. I feel like ooh. that should be the other way. No, around. that's like, like a. What you're saying. That's like Punisher a, is Marvel's no. R-rated Batman. Right. That's yes, like yes, a yes. split timeline. I agree with you Because like Batman's whole family is dead, and so is the Punisher's. And this is what I'm saying. Punisher was like, I'm gonna use guns like crazy, and Batman. Oh, Batman, like, no, no guns. guns. We can really get into this. Guys. That is interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll hold off. That is interesting. <laughs> um. So this is uh. This is um. Uh, malware program thing whatever that's been um quietly infecting people's routers and and networks and systems and things oh okay so episode but, one of season seven of doctor who <laughs> i don't want to talk about Doctor Who. <laughs> right i have no idea is that the one oh, with the, the, the car up? i'm still in is dread. that the one with the car that drives itself into a lake and kills the lady no that's the one where if you connect to that wi-fi that has the alien signals then they've got you trapped in the screen <laughs> what i think it was the first <laughs> I love describing Doctor oh Who. Gosh. That's true. It's so great. That's true. It was a decent. Or is it? The, was it the one with the diet pill that made you uh, no, like no, have no. the fat little? It was alien one where like if you connect to that Wi-Fi, then they can control you. Okay. It was actually kind of a cool episode. It was the first. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Oh my gosh! It wasn't the one with the baby name. I think it was the Stormbringer. last. I think it was the first episode of the last. It's Matt Smith season. I could be off by one season. Doesn't matter. I don't watch Doctor Who anymore. What? No. That's a whole other thing. You're dead to me. Oh my gosh! No, I've got my reasons. I only Peter Capaldi is the only thing keeping it alive for me. Let's okay. keep going. Anyway, malware, guys. Mm-hmm. Woo! That's way interesting, right? I think so. It's Batman yeah, absolutely malware. Absolutely, it is. Okay, so uh, this is called it's a it's a malware called Wi-Fi. wi Can you say that with a Batman what? voice? I mean, I feel it'd be appropriate. The Kevin Conroy. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> or the Christian. Got a preference? Yeah, right. That's true. wi <laughs> There it is. There it is. Sounds very. Cool. Where's my watch? <laughs> That's Batman. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Goofy Saturday night. Yeah. yeah. Um. So this is a. Uh, uh, it's it's been working its way into people's like Wi-Fi and routers and, and and networks very quietly. Yeah. Um. And instead of being like a jerk and stealing information or infecting it with viruses or whatever and supervising what you're doing, what it does is it comes in. It using very like it goes into networks that have very basic default like security measures like yep. they didn't change anything when you set up your Wi-Fi or whatever and it comes in and it shuts the door behind it and it goes okay I'm gonna set up shop <laughs> well I'm this gonna, will be nice I'm gonna I'm gonna look around uh there's a bunch of like malware over here that's actually like has bad intentions I'm gonna get rid of that Ooh. and then I'm gonna send a message to the to the network administrator or the user or whatever to be like hey change your settings so. I mean, it kind of is Batman. Yeah. Yeah, basically. It, it cleans up house and, uh, as much as best uh-huh. as it can um, mm. without using guns. Your firewall might be like, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> but- Batman's like, no way. No, no. I'm in. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. So who like coded this? Who wrote this? Or- um, I, I, nobody knows where it came from? Nobody really knows. Ra's al um, coded it? Yeah. Ra's al Ghul, uh, Bane well, coded specifically this. Specifically Liam Neeson, actually. Yeah, Liam Neeson. Um. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this it's apparently been going on since like 2014. Um, like a sec- an independent security researcher noticed it, or a researcher um, like s- found it doing weird things on his home router, and yeah. like kind of just you know started poking around with it. And apparently, it's been getting around pretty pretty quickly and just doing nice things. And um, when you try to like look at it, it like oh my gosh, it's 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 pretty cool. Like it. It doesn't. It helps prevent like DDoS attacks and stuff like that. And um, it's just basically like your your friend who knows computers who just comes in and says, "Hey, you just got to fix this real quick for you." That's um, cool. And someone wrote it just to write it, huh? Yeah. Um, apparently, when you dig into the code, <laughs> so, though, f- so far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have thoughts. You <laughs> have you have thoughts. I do. Well, dare we say reservations? Go, I do. Well, you want to yeah, go with your thoughts? I mean, 
it's I I see I hope this is as altruistic as it appears to be but yeah it just, just it could be like real life things actually couldn't yeah be. just like as a real life batman were to appear i would not necessarily <laughs> trust that either yeah but somehow violating people's privacy in order like i i'm and glad that it's yeah. okay it's good for now mm-hmm. but i kind of don't yeah agree with that that's like without permission yeah coming like, in and like pointing s- out everything wrong with your network well yeah like you said earlier <laughs> invite your friend over that knows computers well that's mm-hmm. your friend you yeah. know that person that's true really i'm i'm really hoping we're not gonna see in a year's time however long that like oh well actually they were looking at all of your <laughs> actually oh, yeah, diehard yeah. four <laughs> right right this is, <laughs> uh, I was gonna say Superman three to keep it on the that's good too to keep it on, on the, the DC. superhero oh, my uh, God. side <laughs> yeah, of things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah it just um, I mean I'm I'm not necessarily in the camp of compromising security for or like privacy for security that's tricky but. I hope this is as altruistic as it has been so far. Yeah, and I, I hope it continues to be. Um, it's a, I guess it's a happy surprise in a way um, to see somebody going out there and programming this to just improve people's networks. Hopefully, just to do that. Yeah, yeah. and that that's great. And. Um, like I hope it doesn't happen too much where people start distrusting it and it's like oh people are trying to outdo each other by infecting people's networks and stuff. <laughs> I feel um, like there might be I'm not joking there's like a wild west metaphor here too. Like what if someone ooh. just decided to start quote unquote doing good in a in a wild west style mm-hmm. sure. storytelling and uh, you know usually that story goes that that person gets recognized enough that they become just some sheriff or something or some like you know they end up they end up yeah. settling getting recognized and settling down. Mm-hmm. Does this code or whoever wrote this code or whoever group of people wrote this code, do they eventually get recognized and then just work for Microsoft or something? Or like, sure, you know or what start I mean? yeah. their own yeah. security, the right. cybersecurity company. Or I mean, I, like yeah. I think I hope that's how this story goes. Well, whoever, whoever yeah. did this... a publicity stunt, I gotta say. Yeah. Whoever whoever programmed this has, already has like a little bit of an ego um, because when you investigate it, um, like looking into the, the, the mm-hmm. code or whatever, you find a message that says to any NSA and FBI agents reading my email, uh, please oh, consider <laughs> please consider whether defending the U.S. Constitution against all enemies, foreign or domestic, requires you to follow Snowden's example. Mm. So you know, a little huh. bit preachy in there. Well, well, not well. I mean, it, I'm, it's a message. It that's is for sure. It is. Um, yeah, interesting. I mean, weird to use a. Uh, like a malware as your platform. <laughs> That's true, but I can't. I mean, what well, better way to get people's attention? I guess mm-hmm. it's. This is sort Made of. Made you think. Well, like yeah, that. that too. It's. I mean, this is sort of the the world that we live in now. I mean, as things increasingly get put online and all that, mm-hmm. you know, our privacy becomes more and more of a concern. Yeah. Um, actually, a while ago, I wrote about a comic book series for our website. I was just looking at that article the other day. That is a crazy coincidence. I was on <laughs> our website looking at that article again. Well, yeah, which, by the way... Maybe we should retweet has, it or something. ...has certainly come to an end by now. This yeah. would be... Oh, that comic has? Yeah, this would be... Um, what was the, the name pri- of this comic? It's The Private Eye by Brian yeah. K. Vaughn and Marcos Martin. Um, it's like on BKV. The, yeah, yeah. We it's, used to we used to do like a little bit of written content on our website, V. Yeah, I and it'd be that. awesome to get back into that sometime. But mm-hmm. uh, Tony had a pretty good article on there about nice. this. Yeah, nice. um, but it's it's all about uh, essentially taking that idea to the extreme of of that sort of online privacy and what that means. Um, but I, you know, what I I appreciate the. The, the sort of metaphor here that you're there they're, you're working with okay to to go with the Batman sure. theme here mm-hmm. you know if criminals are a cowardly and superstitious lot I mean you got to use fear against them so in this case it, like it, you're like this is you're lucky that I'm nice like this could have been a lot worse 
Oh, Ma- that's just. Uh, uh, does that's Batman just say old, that a lot? Yeah, that's just an old. That, that's why he became Batman. <laughs> uh, Batman comes in. I could have been a really bad guy. Yeah. Well, but I'm no, not. no. So instead <laughs> of just being a guy, he becomes a symbol. It's sort of the Batman Begins mm-hmm. thing, but like you're you're playing on superstitions and people's fears right. already. So in this case, you're you're using that fear of malware, of identity theft, I see. of things like that, to mm-hmm. then make a statement about it to people. I guess I, yeah, I I I, I can appreciate the theatrics of it, but it's just maybe point, crossing a bit of a line. I think I know it's on that gray space. It certainly is in that gray space. That is, we can only observe it for now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's the the article on Mary Sue also links to um, a, a total breakdown on a a website called S- Sim- Simon Tech. Okay. S y m a n t e c. Oh. And they just basically deconstruct the whole thing. Um, look at it. Look at the various parts of the code about how it like the way it gets in. It like it's like a um, a telnet daemon, and when it comes in, it deletes that port or that 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 bit of data that allows that yeah. infiltration mm-hmm. so that is the door shutting behind them literally yeah. yeah sure um but yeah they do talk about how there are some some weird bits to it that aren't huge red flags but it's just curious it's just weird yeah, yeah. um so if you know computer talk give it a read <laughs> i don't at all okay it it does explain it pretty well but that's cool yeah. I mean, Michael Michael Keaton sleeping upside down was a little bit of a weird tell, <laughs> if I may. He's our hero. Oh who was the oh, who was the one off Batman who had like one movie? Well, Val Kilmer and Val George Kilmer Clooney. Included. Oh, yeah, but anyway. But anyway. But anyway. All right, guys. Well, let's do this. Let's get out of here. It's a Saturday yeah. night. Let's go. Let's go have it. I know Tony. You're heading to the film festival after this. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um. Going to see The Shining, original 35 millimeter. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, should be pretty cool. Nice. It's be cool. Did you watch um, Room um, 237? 237. Yeah. I did indeed. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. good. Good. Ooh. I really liked it. Not for, Room 237? Yeah, not yeah. for what it was mm-hmm. about. But for me, it was like, I know we're starting, whatever. But it was sure. more about like an observation of the people who thought all of this stuff than it was about any of it being right or wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Correct yeah. or incorrect, I should right. say. Mm-hmm. Right. It's far less about the actual content of the movie than yes. the people behind the, yeah. that there. That same yeah. filmmaker just made a new film that just came out. And I think it's called Night Terror or something like that. And it's about the sleep paralysis stuff that people get oh sure anyways well let's get out of here um <laughs> let's see v if people can find you on uh if you want to talk to you about malware they can do that they can by... t- talk yes definitely come by talk to me about malware um i am at bear underscore annika <laughs> fantastic tony if they want to have in-depth conversations about the shining with you they can find you on twitter <laughs> shining or batman uh i'm <laughs> you get all the cool I stuff am at tony underscore <laughs> stig says. Tony underscore Stig. Fantastic. We love it when people tweet the show at Technophiles Pod. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook, and YouTube by searching Technophiles, or go to our actual website, technophilespodcast.com, where you can check out show notes to this episode, and take a look at some of the other shows we do, like the Technophiles Newscast and Branching Dialogue. All right, guys. um, V, I'll see you on Tuesday. Tony, go, go enjoy the shining. I will. Try not to drown in an elevator full of blood. That is the weirdest thing that anyone you know has it took ever wished. It was like it took a day and a half to reset that or something. Every single oh, I can't I can imagine. imagine. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Cool. All I right. Can't imagine. Have a good night, everybody. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, you can tweet me on Twitter. Oh, I just Jeff oh, Goldblum. Oh. Did you just see that? Oh, yeah, I, I did. Oh, I, um, that was amazing. Oh. Half, half Goldblum, half Woody Allen. Oh, yeah. a little bit. I yeah. see that. I see yeah. it. Yeah. I wish it was more Goldblum yeah. than Woody Allen, but I have to confess it probably was. Woody we'll Allen's say saying. Uh, if you'd like to tweet me, uh, do that at um, uh, David Geisler at, at Raptor Paint. I don't even know what that means anymore. That is just the weirdest thing. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah. See ya.